okay. I broke down the media and coaches poll of the Big Sky preseason rankings a couple of weeks ago following attending the Big Sky Media Day. Now, I am going to talk about my preseason Big Sky rankings. My preseason Big Sky rankings. These are my rankings. So if you want to get mad at anybody for where these rankings stand, get mad at me. Come at me on Twitter. Come at me on Facebook. Let me know what your thoughts are about it. I love when you guys give me comments back. I love when you guys have pushback. I do not get mad about any of that. That's what this is about. We are not going to agree. America was not made on agreement. Not everybody is supposed to agree all the time. And we aren't going to agree all the time. So, number one. Obviously, the Montana Grizzlies. They return a lot of talent. And they're the FCS national champion runner-up. So, um, I think it's just right that they are the number one team in the Big Sky preseason rankings coming into the season. At number two, Montana State. You got Brody Greeby. You got Tommy Malott. You got Marcus Weir. All upperclassmen, all seniors for that Montana State squad. Obviously, like I said, same with Sac State and Jackson Slater. Marcus Weir does not make up that offensive line. But that Montana State offensive line does have a ton of players who have played a ton of minutes, a ton of starting minutes for Montana State. I think experience is one of the biggest things for offensive linemen. Cohesion and experience are one of the biggest things that can help or hurt an offensive line. I think they have a lot of experience. I think they're going to have a lot of cohesion. I think they're going to be able to keep Tommy Malat upright. That is the number two team on my rankings. At number three, we have Idaho. Now, some of you guys might be surprised by this because I just mentioned a couple of, like, two topics ago how Idaho lost a lot of talent, especially offensively. Hayden Haddon, Anthony Woods, Jermaine Jackson, and Giovanni McCoy. All all-conference level players, all all-conference players for Idaho. They're all gone. Coach Eck is a great coach. I think Coach Eck is one of the best coaches in the Big Sky Conference. I would probably put him at top three. I got Bobby Houck, Brent Vegan, and then I'd probably put um, Coach Eck at number three. Um... Yeah, I, I don't think, I don't know. You guys can come at me if you if you guys want to. Those are my top three coaches in the Big Sky. Coach Eck, one of those coaches, came over from South Dakota State, has a history of being in the Big Sky Conference. He understands the conference, and I think he's a good coach, and I think he knows how to get the best out of his players. Jack Lane played great last year, young guy. Um, I think he is going to have a good season. I think Jack Lane is going to have a good year. Obviously, that is the difference that is the difference maker for Idaho. Is Jack Lane going to be a good player? Is he going to be an average player? If he's a good quarterback, I think Idaho is going to have a really good year. If he doesn't have the best season, I think Idaho is going to struggle this year. I think good QB play and good coaching is something that helps teams stand out in the big sky. And I think Idaho has both. I think they have a good quarterback and I think they have a good coach. You think about some of the teams who stand out every year in the big sky conference, Montana state, they have Brent Vegan. They've been good since Brent Vegan has been there. They were good when Choate was there. Not as good on the record books. They were good against the rival. They weren't as good on the record books. Brent Vegan, really good coach. Bobby Howe, really good coach. One of the best teams in the Big Sky Conference year in and year out. Idaho, since Coach Eck has been there, has been one of the better teams in the Big Sky Conference since. Also, you look at Coach Andy Thompson at Sac State. Sac State has, you know, kind of had a down year last year, but they just got off winning Back to back to back Big Sky Championships, 22 being the last year of that. Um, I think Andy Thompson, um, you know, I think he's a really good coach. I wouldn't put him necessarily in that top three. Coach Eck, Brent Vegan, Bobby Houck, but I think Andy Thompson is up there as well. Um, you guys let me know what you guys think about that. And I will move on to number four on my list, which is Eastern Washington. Eastern Washington. Now, I know. I know crazy that i put them above uc davis and sac state i know i'm gonna get pushback for this and i expect to but i think eastern washington can be a really good team in 2024 i really do i really do heavy offensive unit will the defense hold up i don't want to say too much more other than that because i've mentioned them all the time kakoa visperus i think he could be one of the top top three four quarterbacks in the conference i really do I think he could be top three, top four quarterback in the conference. Most definitely. Efton Chisholm, Nolan Ohm. I mean, those are the pieces. Those are the pieces that stand out to me. What does their defense look like? Eastern Washington needs defense, but number four, they're number four on my preseason rankings. UC Davis at number five above Sac State because I do think UC Davis is going to be a better team than Sac State. I mentioned that when talking about the stats perform top 25, and I'm mentioning it now. UC Davis, Lan Larison is all that matters. If he's healthy, they have a chance. 
This guy can do it all. Obviously, offensive line is a piece. Obviously, receivers. Obviously, you need a quarterback. I mean, he's a running back, though, so you don't necessarily need a quarterback to throw him the ball. You just need him to hand it off and get out the freaking way. Defensively, I think UC Davis is usually middle of the pack, not usually one of the best defenses, but never one of the worst defenses, kind of middle of the pack. That's, you know, as long as they have that, I think Land Larson and, and um, their offensive unit can kind of carry them along the way. UC Davis at number five. Sac State at number six. I, I only put explanations for the top five. Montana, returning talent. Montana State, Greeby, Malat, Weir at Idaho, Coach Eck and Jack Lane at number four. Offense for Eastern Washington. Number five, Lan Larison. At number six, we have Sac State. We know what they bring to the table. At number seven, I got Northern Arizona. At number eight, I have Weber State. At number nine, I have Idaho State. At number 10, I have Cal Poly. At number 11, I have Portland State. I honestly think Portland State, and talking to some of the coaches at the Big Sky Media Day, they would echo this. I think Portland State has a pretty decent squad. They got a really good quarterback, one of the best quarterbacks in the Big Sky, and Dante Sachere. Um, they, they were a really good unit on the ground last year. They were one of the better rushing teams in the on the ground last year. Honestly, I think they were second behind Montana State rushing the ball last year. Um, but they have a gauntlet of a schedule. If you haven't seen Portland State's schedule, please go look at it. Portland State might not be a bad outfit in 2024, but their schedule does not bode well. They're playing like seven or eight FCS, 2023 FCS playoff teams in 2024. They have Boise State and Washington State. They start the season with Washington State. They got South Dakota like week two. They have Weber State pretty early. That's going to be a big test for them. I, I think that Weber State game could kind of give us a lot of answers in terms of what Weber State and what Portland State are going to be in the big sky. But just go look at that Portland State schedule. It's not very friendly for any FCS team, any Big Sky team. Nobody will want to have that schedule, but that's why they're at 11. And then at number 12, Northern Colorado. Um, I don't expect much from Northern Colorado. They, they haven't been good in the Big Sky. Um, I didn't even know this stat about Northern Colorado. Um, Colton Nuanez um, of Nuanez Now ESPN or Skyline Sports. I'm working with Skyline Sports this year. Colton Nuanez has told me that Northern Colorado has been in the sub, has been in the FCS, has been in the Big Sky since 2006, and they have never had a winning season. Somebody, I mean, not one, not one. And if you've ever been to Greeley in North Carolina or Northern Colorado, they don't have the best facilities. Doesn't look like they put a lot of money or time into their football program. Doesn't look like too many people care about being good at football. It just seems like they're happy with being a Big Sky team, happy to be in the FCS. I mean, it's just kind of sad. I'm not trying to poo-poo on Northern Colorado, but it would be nice if they were a little bit more competitive in the Big Sky. Something that Colton Nuanez talks about. It is not good for a conference if one team is a for-sure win for every team in the conference. Like, if you hope that you have Northern Colorado on your schedule because you know that's at least one win, that is terrible for the conference. Absolutely terrible. So, um, Northern Colorado, rightfully at 12, they have to show us that they're different before they start getting ranked higher in the preseason top 20, uh, in the preseason rankings. But those are my preseason rankings at one Montana, two Montana State, three Idaho, four Eastern Washington, five UC Davis, six Sac State, seven Northern Arizona. 8, Weber State, 9, Idaho State, 10, Cal Poly, 11, Portland State, and 12, Northern Colorado. You guys let me know what you guys think about my rankings down below, and I will move on.